Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for February 20th, 2022. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're going to be discussing cloud computing, the basics of it, and why you should start caring about it. Um, in the news, we keep hearing over and over about different cloud computing modules and services that are out there. And so we're going to go over, go over that and what you need to look out for and to keep yourself private and secure. So as always, I'm Carl. Hi, this is Amon. And so we're going to get started right now. All right. So basically the question is, what is cloud computing? Well, uh, simply put, uh, cloud computing is the delivery of computing services. Uh, it includes servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, any type of uh, uh, intelligence over the internet. And that's what is referred to as the cloud. And this is basically to offer faster innovation and flexible resources and uh, economies of scale. Uh, because in cloud computing, you typically pay only for the cloud service that you use. Um, and there is a lot of services that we get for free, you know, in the cloud that we don't realize that these are, you know, cloud services. Yeah, a lot of it being like uh, Amazon buckets that they're talking about. Uh, well, if you, if you look at uh, even something like uh, Microsoft 365 or, or even Google Gmail, you know, that's a software as a service, you know, mm -hmm. um, your, your, your Google Photos, um, that's also yeah. software as a service, you know, it's, it's similar, it's similar. Yeah, Amazon, which, you know, it, it, it's, it's the biggest cloud service provider, it's AWS, Amazon Web Services, and followed by uh, Microsoft Azure, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're the two biggest players. Um, and, and mostly for, you know, in, in, in the technical, with a technical perspective, um, but all of these, you know, anything, anything that you use or, or any type of resource that you use with, but the only thing that you have is just, uh, you can access with a, with a web browser and a, and a network connection, internet connection. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cloud service. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, with Facebook or. Right other social medias out there. That's another example of cloud computing. And right. I know there's a lot of uh, IOT devices that are starting to come around that are using the cloud based computing, like right. many uh, security cameras, or like many different smart devices that you can use your smartphone away from your house to say, Okay, I'm going to turn on the light at this time and whatnot. The back end of all that is using cloud computing to get that to happen. Right. And sometimes some of those services are very secure and sometimes they're not. So it depends on how much money the company that's creating them puts into it. Um, I know like most, most of the cheaper end devices that are like five, $10 a piece usually don't put as much security thought into it than those that cost like over a hundred dollars. So right. the question is, how does this infrastructure work and how can we secure it so that it won't become a threat to us? Well, so before we understand the, the threat, um, we need to understand we define what the cloud is, right? Yeah. Um, as a consumer, generally what we use, and, and I'm talking about away from being a business or needing any more technical, uh, uh, you know, technically advanced solutions, what we use is typically called a, 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 is an SaaS, a software as a service, right? The, the examples that we gave earlier is our software as a service. 
um, things like, like we say, you know, Dropbox and Google Docs and Microsoft Office 365. Um, now there is, you brought up IoT devices, and this is a, a little bit, it, it's a subset of, of cloud computers called edge computing, right? So everything that you, you work with, so your communication with your camera at home or, or you know, which is, I, is an IoT device or with your Alexa, all these, imagine them like they're on the edge of the cloud. So you're dealing with those devices directly. And then when those devices need to get any updates or they need to upload, you know, uh, large amounts of data or they need to do any type of uh, uh, large capacity computing, that's when they reach to the servers, right? So now, now they actually dig deeper, but your communication with the devices is pretty much on the edge. Uh, the problem with those IoT devices is they're purpose built, right? So any of the components that are within that make up that the IoT device are not made to be very secure, right? And they're and because also they're only purpose made for one thing or or a few things, they're very easy to overpower, right? That's number one. Number two is when we talk about the cloud, there's something that's that's very common in the cloud, which is called a, a shared security responsibility, right? So that your cloud service provider is responsible for anything that's in the cloud, right? So how the communication between the edge device and the cloud or the server and the cloud, how secure that is. But your communication with the device is your responsibility. Right. So if you don't apply any security principles and you don't follow, you know, the basic common sense to secure your communication with that device, it's very easy for someone to circumvent that and gain access to the cloud, right? And gain access to the data that's within the cloud because humans are the weakest link when it comes to security, right? We can apply all types of technical wizardry to protect our data and to protect it in our cloud device, our cloud devices or cloud services. But if we don't apply them or we don't gain the knowledge to apply them, um, that's when everything will, will fall apart. And 99% of attacks will, you know, will begin because of the human factor, right? Yeah. And because uh, let's say most of the data breaches start with compromising a human to get them to do something that they won't normally do like either click on a link or open an attachment and all that so the same goes with the cloud computing too um basically the cloud will do exactly what you tell it to do and if it's not configured properly someone could take advantage of that and again, like you said, it depends on who's in control, who's going to be responsible for it, either the end user or the service provider. And unfortunately, if the service provider is in control of that, it's kind of hard to protect yourself. So you have to like do a little bit of due diligence to see, okay, are they responsible enough have they been in the news a lot about data breaches or things like that like t-mobile who had like six data breaches and within a few years i would say pretty much you should probably stay away from them but if you get another company that has like one or two data breaches within a six-year period i think they're pretty good with their security because unfortunately it's impossible this day to be completely uh, hack proof. You're going to have some uh, mess ups or some kind of breaches within your walls because, again, the human factor is the weakest link. And unfortunately, you can't eliminate the human factor from security. Right. Uh, and you, know, you, you mentioned. Um... You know the t-mobile breaches right mm -hmm. and even if if t-mobile itself is not an, a, a cloud provider right because a cloud provider is pretty much you know is, is an organization or a person that is responsible for making the cloud service available mm -hmm. um 
the R 90% of the time, you know, companies like T-Mobile are, are called a cloud carrier, right? And they're the organizations that have the responsibility of transferring uh, data. They're kind of like an intermediary, right? And they provide that con connectivity to transport uh, cloud services from the provider to the consumer, right? And, you know, we, we know that, you know, from, from, from precedence, we know that these companies are not, you know, they're not very secure. So yeah, there, there, there are a lot of, a lot of hands in the pot when it comes to, to, to cloud services. Uh, but in reality, it's, it still is the more secure uh, alternative than having things, you know, on a private cloud at home, or if you have like a, a network storage device at home, yeah. because remember, it's not just confidentiality. When we talk about cybersecurity, there are the three pillars, right? It's called the, the, the CIA triad, right? Which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So yeah, if, if you, if someone was, you know, if you were to suffer a breach through a cloud carrier, when your information is being transferred you know, from your computer to your cloud service provider, and you may suffer that breach and your information may be exposed, yeah, you, you, you may suffer that confidentiality, uh, it, it, may, it may suffer, but let's say you have that same, you, you don't have any safeguards at home and you have all your important, important documents and your, your important pictures and, and you know, your music and all that on your network cloud storage at home and then that gets corrupt or you or lose power and it, or yeah, or, or any of that. So, or someone can, can steal it or someone can go in there and, you know, change the data around. So yeah, we may, by, by working with the cloud, some of the confidentiality may be put in jeopardy, but if you don't use it, you're jeopardizing confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Yeah. Right. And, and when, when we talk about, especially availability, you know, when it comes to, uh, to the cloud, if, if your usage becomes more, um, then there's something that's called, called elasticity, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you can, you can have a uh, uh, hundred gigs on, on your Google drive, but the next day, you know, no, I need, I need 150. Well, you pay uh, the 299 a month and now you have, you know, without having to go and yeah. buy another drive and transfer data and all that, it, it gets bigger, right? And there's also, let's say, one of the servers fails where your 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 you know stuff is at. Well, you, you won't feel it, right? Because there's redundancy, you know. So Google will have your you know your files or documents on a few servers. If you yeah. were to pay for that and implement it yourself, you need a lot of technical knowledge, and you need to invest a lot of money. Yeah, a ton of money, right? <laughs> so so that's you know it's it's. Uh, it's it's the wave of the future, right? You'll see a lot of organizations that they're moving, they're moving their 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 operations into the cloud, right? Yeah. Um, even even the 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 federal government, right? The federal government uses what's called the private cloud, right? Which is the cloud that's solely for the use of the use by one tenant, which is the federal government, right? Yeah. Because th there are some there are some threats um if you use a, a another type of cloud uh architecture which is a, or, or a cloud deployment model which is a public cloud right uh, and there's another one with a community cloud where you get let's say um we we are in, in in a few cities and we're like a couple of biotech companies and we want to share resources and we want we don't want anyone else with us so we can have what's called the community cloud the only people in that type of organization or that type of organization type will have access to that cloud right um, so or it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it is the wave of the future, right? That's, that's where everybody's moving and that's, and, and you, you'll, you'll see, for example, you brought up IOTs and if we talk about, you know, 10 years ago, you would have, you know, your windows PC or your Apple PC, and I need to have this many gigs of Ram. I need to have this much CPU capacity. Now all you need is a Chromebook and internet access and a web browser. And then with that, you can fire up a virtual machine in the cloud, and then you can do things on that very, or even a Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah. And you can do things on that that you, that you can do on, on you know, on, on, on a server, just, just by having a, a wireless, uh, just by having a web browser, right? Yeah. And also the newest, uh, one of the newer things going on is like a cloud gaming, where you could rent a, 
computer online to game on it, it will have like really high power graphics and all of the RAM and whatnot, and then you'll just play your games on there and then shut down your computer afterwards, and then someone else would <laughs> rent that same server and do the same thing. Uh, um, so it is, it is kind of interesting how the future is being uh, more leaning towards cloud computing. Um, there's even rumors about how many operating systems may turn more to cloud-based instead of having an operating system installed on your computer. You basically have like a shell computer, kind of like a Chromebook, and then go online and do all your computing through the cloud instead of having everything installed on your local computer. It would be interesting if that does flush out because then it'll open up a whole new world of different uh, responsibilities and maybe more risks or less risk depending on how it's structured. So the question of the I guess we have to answer is how can we secure ourselves so that we can limit the impact of cloud computing so that it's not a catastrophe every time or we're not sitting there worried about, okay, is my data safe or is it going to be compromised or things like that? Well, so number one is, you know, to choose a reputable cloud service provider. That's number yeah. one. Right. Uh, remember that when we talk about this, if something is free, then you are the product, right? If you're not paying for it, then you are the product. Um, so, you know, something like, okay, use Google, use AWS, use uh, Windows Azure, use, uh, use uh, uh, you know, Dropbox. Um, all those are reputable companies, right? Uh, there are other companies who will offer you more, but it, understand that they may not be based in a location where there's any privacy rights okay uh, personally for i what i when, when i when i look at a software i like to uh, i kind of lean towards european software yeah. companies right why because the gdpr is a lot more strict than what we have here in, in the united states uh, i live in california we have very strict rules here but a lot of companies even even though they're they're based in california they don't incorporate in california so that yeah. you know they, they, some of those rules don't apply to them uh, but europe in general has that gdpr uh regulation that, that that protects the consumers and and i'm hoping that in the united states will catch up uh, eventually yeah, as a country um, i mean we've done like if you look at the uh, hipaa for example we've done something when it comes to uh, medical data but yeah. we want that for all data mm -hmm. right um so that's number one is choose choose a, a good cloud service provider that you trust with your data and then um you know you, you really can't do much with your data as long as it's in the cloud right yeah. but you need to uh use common and, 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 and co common sense and good security practices when it comes to securing your access to that cloud, right? We talked about this before, use, uh, encrypt your data, you, as it was when you, you know, in, in use and in transit, use a VPN uh, when you're uploading that data, uh, use a password manager for all your, your, um, uh, your cloud services. Okay. Don't use the same username and password for everything, right? All those things are, are, are uh, don't, don't share your password, you know, oh, I, I need to log in and, 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 and see, you know, something that, oh, I, you didn't, you emailed me, but I didn't get it. Can I just get your password and I'll log in? No, you can't, no. <laughs> you know, things like that. So, um, because the threats, the threats for cloud services are, are there, right? And there's a lot of them. And, and the more organizations get into the cloud the more threats that we will and the more attacks that we will see yeah because like how many uh times have you heard celebrities iphones have been hacked into and all their private uh saucy little photos get leaked right. online uh, it, 
the same concept goes for all of us. Like, would we want our private photos or private documentations to be plastered online? If you, if we don't secure it properly, that's basically what we're doing. We're just leaving the door wide open for someone to walk right in and take what they want and do whatever they want with it. And who knows what they're going to do with it. Um, that's, you know, there's another, another, um, thing, another type of threat, which is, it's, um, it's insufficient due diligence, right? Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like, you think you're doing, you know, you think you're doing right, you know, you think you're doing enough, but in reality, you're not. Okay. So one of the easiest way to combat this is education right and we push this a lot right and we say and and this is this is the main purpose of our, our of our podcast is educate yourself right if you don't know what you don't know right but that's not an excuse right it, you need to learn right if if you are going to be using your information if you are going to be sharing information if you are going to to be on a platform don't just be like any other end user and, and understand what you're doing you know, mm -hmm. don't just uh, it, it really, really, you know, uh, practice due diligence when it comes to 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 your data. Yeah, and most of that comes down to account uh, auditing. It's like, okay, how many of these accounts do I actually use? How many of them are just there just because? And if if you're not actively using it, there's no reason to have that account. You just shut it down and be done with it. And also another thing is to audit your passwords and say, okay, are these found in the have I been pwned type databases? Right. If they are, immediately change it. If not, right. then you're safe to go to go with it as long as it's a complicated enough password where it has the uppercase lowercase special characters more than i would say 12 characters long at the minimum but right. and just make sure you don't have any personal data in there like don't use anniversaries or birthdays or your pets names because those are easy to find through social media and also go through your social media also and to see how much have you been sharing and the privacy settings on there. Like, do you have everything set to public or do you have some controls on there? Say, so, okay, only certain people can see about it. And the best thing I could say about social media is the less information you share, the less information the hackers have to try to compromise your cloud services because if they don't know much about you they can't guess what you're using for passwords or usernames or anything like that yeah and your pin numbers yeah <laughs> always constantly keep an eye on those pin numbers <laughs> yeah so you know it's so it, to close with, you know, like this is not doom and gloom, right? It's how do I protect myself, right, mm -hmm. in, in the cloud? Uh, and very simply put, there's a few few steps. If you think about it this way, number one is the applications that you're using. Make sure that the applications that you're using on your hosts are secure, unpatched, and up to date. Make sure that number two is your information that you're 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 sharing. If you don't, if 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 it's not necessary, don't share it. If you are going to share it or or move it from one place to another, make sure it's encrypted. Um, number three is management, right? Management of your, what we just talked about is your access credentials and your passwords. Uh, the fourth is the network that you're on. So am I am I using a secure network or am I just using an open, uh, you know, Starbucks network? Or I'm not picking on yeah. Starbucks or anything. I'm just because I was just there. <laughs> but uh, I'm just using an open network, you know, or I'm just driving down the street and I found an open network, an open Wi-Fi, yeah. and I just decided to log on. So make sure you're using a secure network. Uh, make sure that the computer that you're working on um, is legitimate. It doesn't have any backdoors on it, right? Um, 
any storage, any files that you have stored, any backups that you have, make sure all that is encrypted and there, and it's sitting behind a firewall. Right? Or and totally it's offline. <laughs> or offline. And know what I'm saying, if, you know, if, if you're using the internet and all that stuff is built in your windows. I mean, windows has done a great job, you know, starting windows 10 with the security, uh, with their security or having a firewall and, and your security control center and all that, use it and make sure that stuff is, if you get that little red shield on the bottom right corner of your screen, handle it, you know, don't just yeah. let it sit there for months on end. Um, and, and finally, and this one is, is and, and I'm guilty of that, is physical security of your computer, right? If someone were to break into your, your house right now, is your computer locked down, right? Can they walk out with that with your laptop? If you have a laptop, put it, Put a lock on it on Amazon, five bucks. Lock it to your lock it to your to your desk or something, you know, so that it just doesn't walk away. Uh, and and it, again, just you know, it, these are very simple steps, uh, but really, all it takes you just a little bit of education and common sense. Yeah, well, there's a reason why it's called simple cyber defense. <laughs> yeah, because it's exactly. it's these simple things that we can all do that will protect ourselves a lot of people see cybersecurity as this complicated big thing that you have to do but if you just break it down to the bare basics it's just these simple steps that you have to do like the complications come when you get into large organizations and you're and you're uh, trying to protect billions of different computers and a lot of different data flowing around but if you're just worried about yourself, it's very simple to do that. And well, honestly, Carl, even even if you look at big organizations, right? Mm -hmm. How many frameworks, like frameworks that we have out there, from the, you know, from and, and standards that really simplify and put step by step what you need to do. Yeah. Uh, even for you know for security admins or system admins or network admins. Um, it, they're doing the same thing that we're doing our single computer here, except on a much larger scale. Much scale, yeah. Right, but it's 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 really it's it's just like you said, it's it's a simple cyber defense and it's common sense. Yeah. Right. So I guess we'll wrap it up with that, and hopefully everyone learns something new. And remember to keep your data safe. Encryption is your best friend. <laughs> Strong complicated passwords will definitely protect yourself more than you think and just keep these simple things in mind and when you are using cloud computing just try to use reputable uh, companies like we said and then with that said we'll close it up and we'll see you in the next one where we're going to be talking about wireless configurations and security so we'll see you in the next episode thanks for listening to the simple cyber defense security updates join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode plus if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com